Ready? Let's go, bro. Let's talk. Let's talk. <laughs> All right. Man. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Nick Wavy. I'm back with a new video. I'm with my cousin Tama, aka Mark Lane. What's going yes, on, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As you guys know, everything that's going on in the world right now, with the whole his name is George Floyd. George Floyd. Floyd yeah. George yeah. Floyd. So his name is George Floyd. I haven't watched the video. You watched the video? Yeah, a few times, man. It's uh, it's tough to watch. It's, uh, I didn't watch it because like there's certain things I know that I can bear to watch. And I feel like this is something I can't, you know, I can't watch that. So I see a lot of posts on Instagram. People are saying, if you don't talk about things, if you're not voicing your opinion about what's going on in society right now, you're part of the problem. Yeah. Right? So I feel like whenever there's like a racial problem going on in society, I never voice it. I never voice my opinion. I never say my two cents. And that's because I'm very uneducated on racism as a whole. Like, I don't know how racism started. I don't know why us as black people are faced with these issues in today's society. And I know you're educated on that. Now my boy here has a master's. Not a bachelor's, has a master's. And this is my cousin, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm proud of him. He's in the workforce where, so given a little background story on him, in your field, you're the only black person in the building. Yeah, I mean, I got some. You see some, you know, yeah. around, but you know, it's pretty scarce. <laughs> so you know you're representing yeah. the black culture in yeah. the workforce. You know, so that's kudos to you, bro. Yeah, Honestly, man, kudos try, man. Kudos I try to set an example. Yeah, you know what I mean? So a question that I have, and I think, now again, before we even start, he will be able, Tamar will be able to give me and us a better understanding of racism than I could give you. I'm not an expert at this, so I'm about to learn, and you guys are about to learn the same way. So, again, I feel like with the platform I have, I'm not powerful enough yet to really make a change and to end racism. But what I can do is not only educate myself and educate you guys, so you have a better understanding of what's going on in the world, why it's happening, and yeah. So, my question to you, bro, and it's, you know what, it's admirable that you're using your platform to speak out. You know what I mean? You have a very large platform, wide reach, and the fact that you're even doing this is admirable. Yeah, so, I appreciate that. Cool to you. I appreciate you know that. I mean? So, my question to you is, what is racism? Yeah, man. I mean, um, it's racism. I mean, it's, you can look at it from a lot of different angles. You know what I mean? But one thing it is, it's, a, it's, a, it's an attitude. It's, um, it's a belief. And it's uh, you know uh, a, a behavior towards you know groups which are typically marginalized mm -hmm. and um, you know uh, uh, oppressed in many cases. And racism is a, a tool you know that people use to oppress. You know they use your race as a, a means to demean you, yeah. to say you are lesser because of this or that or whatever. And um, same way you would say someone's because of their sexual orientation, you know, because of their. Uh, you know, uh, whatever, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's a form of hate, you know what I mean? That's a good one. Uh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Form of hate, yeah. for sure. And, uh, you know, what we're seeing now, I mean, with this whole uh, George Floyd thing, and uh, not just George Floyd, but there was also a, a woman in Kentucky, you mm -hmm. know, a couple of weeks ago, she, you, know, some, you know, she was also killed, which is, there's also an investigation going on there. And then we had uh, Ahmaud Arbery in Georgia, you know, who was going for a job. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, oh, yeah, that was not too long ago. That was, I mean, dude, this all happened, you know, in, a, in, a, in like a month and a half, right? So, you know, so we're seeing this and, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot to digest, right? But, you know, this is all a form of, of racism, but a specific kind of racism. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's commonly known as systemic racism. What's right? systemic racism? Systemic racism is racism, which is, you know, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, it's entrenched in society from institutions, structures, and systems that have been in place for years, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And um, this whole issue of police brutality is, a, is like a branch of systemic racism, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, another form of it is, you know, mass incarceration of blacks, um, wrongful conviction of blacks, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the miseducation towards blacks. This is all a part of systemic racism, right? And, um, you know, uh, yeah, so... You know, so why... Why blacks? Like, why is racism? So, on social media, I see racism geared towards black people. I don't see racism geared towards whites, Asians, or Middle Easterns as much as it is towards blacks. Yeah, yeah. Now, why is racism so geared towards black people? Well, in American context, of course, there's a long-standing history of racism, right? Mm -hmm. Long-standing, and you're going, you're going back. You know, so, if you had to go back, how did racism start? 
Well, I mean, it's uh, <laughs> no, well, it, it, it's uh, you. You have to obviously date, you know, stuff back to slavery. Yeah. So you have Which to. Exactly so, you, so you also. So you also have that. Um, I think Europeans first, con- you know, uh, 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 embarked onto Africa um, probably in the 17th century, in the okay. 1600s. I think. I yeah. think. You know, I think the first, the first European country was Portugal. Mm-hmm. They were. They went to. Uh, uh, Guinea or one of one of the West African countries and then they you know uh, uh, traded slaves with the African leaders there and I think they brought them towards the Americas. So what made the Europeans say you know what I look at this black person as you have trade value. You're so, not a student. so slavery I mean began as economic model. Slavery yeah. didn't begin you know through racism it was a trade you know um, African leaders would trade with Europeans. They would offer their goods and and, 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 and services wherever Europeans had. And mm-hmm. Africans also had natural resources which they would provide Europeans. Yeah. So it was a trade, it was an economic system, right? Um, it became a racist agenda when it became very profitable for Europeans, mm-hmm. and they started taking advantage of the economic system and suggesting that you know what blacks are meant to be enslaved. Mm-hmm. And they used things like religion to justify that. They used a number of different ideologies which they you know. Uh, 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 you know, conjured up in their heads in those days and said, this is why blacks are less than us and this is why they are meant to be slaves. So did they look at blacks lesser of them because the European countries were more profitable as a country or they're, more, they're richer, would you say? Well, I mean, the thing is, you have to understand that, you know, and, and everyone has to understand that, you know, slavery in many cases, you know, fueled the European prosperity and later, obviously, American prosperity. Slavery, slavery fueled the Industrial Revolution. So. So Europeans basically started the racism and the hatred towards black people. Of course, like you're more absolutely, towards the absolutely, states. absolutely. Okay. But remember, 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 America was formerly a colony of of, of, of the of the British Empire, right? Mm. You know what I mean. So um, until obviously the American Revolution and all those kind of things, but um, yeah, man. So you have to you have to date racism back to slavery and and the meaning of slavery and what slavery meant to the uh, the economy in America. You know, you had the southern states, you know, against the northern states. Southern states required, you know, slaves for their, you know, their crops, which was commonly cotton and those kind of things. Yeah. And um, they didn't want to stop slavery. It was part of their economic model. It was part of the society. Making money. Yeah, that's what it was. You know, I mean, remember, you know, the most profitable way to make money is having free labor. <laughs> Everybody knows that, right? You know what I mean? Like, when you have free labor, you can make a lot of damn money. You know what I mean? So, um, uh, especially when you have free labor for hundreds of years, you can understand how institutions can be built and systems can be built. Yeah. And uh, so, how did black people, like why black people? If Africa and Europe are having clean trades, yeah. profitable for both countries, I assume, yeah. how did the Europeans end up saying, look, you know what, we're going to stop doing this fair trade with you and we're going to enslave your people? Well, what, what happened was they, you know, they, they realized that when they traded Africans, Africans were, I mean, and you could go into, you know, I, I did a lot of reading on this, but you could go into history and, 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 and read up on, you know, why Africans were preferred as, as slaves because of their physical stature and their uh, ability to, you know, yeah. uh, 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 they're very effective laborers on the, on the lands and the plantations and that kind of stuff. So um, uh, I guess you could say they were uh, good commodities in those days. So, so, from, so from those days it built up, then they started having, you know, obviously ships, slave ships, which we used to, you know, to go get to go across the Atlantic. So the Africans fight back. So I, I'm sure the Europeans are going to say, "Yo, come on a boat. We're not going to pay you. Work for us for free." Was there a fight? Of course. Of so course. how did they lose? Was it because Europe was just much I stronger? Don't, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know. I don't winning or losing. I wouldn't look at that way. I mean, if your people start, if you end up getting enslaved, I yeah, would say that a lot. But remember, it began voluntarily. So they right? chose African leaders chose to trade slaves with the Europeans for right? goods. For goods and, so, oh. and, and different things, and different things, right? I mean, I, I can't give you the details on all yeah. those kind of things, but it began. It, look, slavery began as economic model, but what we're seeing right now with racism in America and Canada and all around, racism all over the world, oh, yeah. right? Is um, based uh, off hate. It's based off hate. It's based yeah. off hate and uh, and ideologies and those kind of things. Hmm. And what we have in America with this police brutality and, and, and all this oppression from police and those kind of things, it's just a, it's just a a branch, you know, it's like a tree, you know, it's like a branch of systemic racism, right? You could even say the the, the slavery has developed. Would you say that? You, I, I would say, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's it's it's, it's transformed, transformed, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? We're obviously not physically slaves, you know what I mean? But the fact is, um, we're still, you know, in, in this society which is built upon oppression and built upon a, a systemic agenda yeah. which confines 
you know, marginalized groups, not just uh, Africans of African descent, but, you know, other marginalized groups in society to lower socioeconomic statuses, yeah. um, uh, uh, harder access to education, obviously, um, harder access to, you know, housing and those kind of things. So this system was made this way in the United States of America. So of why has it been so hard? Or let me ask you a better question. Do you think it will ever change in the United States? And I, and I want to say, first of all, I'm not, I'm not a historian, but like, I'm, just, I'm just telling you what I've read. You know, I read a lot of books on, you know, Caribbean history, African history. So, you know, I mean, I, yeah. I, speak, I speak from that vantage point and I do my research and that kind of thing, right? But so the system, I mean, look, look, okay. When we talk about police brutality, right? What I, what I, always, uh, what I always say is that, you know, you have police who feel untouchable. Mm -hmm. Right, they feel untouchable because of the history behind police brutality. Yeah, the fact that in many cases, and I, I don't know, I don't know statistics, but trust me, I guarantee they're high. Cops get away with these kind of things. Yeah, right. So, I mean, just think about it. You know, if you're if you're a cop, and you know, let's say you have a, a certain hatred, or you know, you have a certain you're racist. Yeah, you're racist. You have a yeah. distaste towards a certain group of, of people. And you have the ability to harm one of them, maybe if you're even crazy enough, like we see, to kill one of them. Mm -hmm. um, you have the idea in your head that, hey, you know what? Chances are I may get away with this anyways, yeah. right? And that's what makes cops feel so uh, 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 safe when they do these kind of things, mm -hmm. right? And this guy's getting recorded, right? Literally, literally, literally he has a camera on his face. Yeah. He, 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 can, he can hear the brother saying, I cannot breathe, man. You know what I mean? I cannot breathe. And, you know, he still has his neck, he has his knee on his neck, you know, blocking his breathing passage. So, of course, this guy's slowly dying, yeah. right? And he doesn't want to get off and he's on camera. But he's, he, he's comfortable doing that because he knows that, one, the law is, 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 it does not discipline police officers adequately enough, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we're seeing this guy, first of all, it took him four days to, to issue some sort of punishment. Yeah. And the punishment isn't even adequate enough. I mean, they gave the guy third degree murder, right? Now, I'm not gonna speak on, you know, you know law and whether, you know, it's technically second degree, third degree, but, you know, I do know, I, mean, I studied criminology for a part of my, you know, uh, 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 bachelor's. And I do not, I wouldn't say this was a premeditated murder. I'm not yeah. gonna say he planned to murder this guy or anything like that. But I am going to say that when he had the opportunity to murder him, he chose to do it. And I don't think that it's third degree murder. Again, don't quote me. I haven't, I haven't, yeah. I haven't, I haven't studied that stuff in a while, but I don't think that it's third degree murder. I think he definitely had an intent to murder, right? And that's, you and would say that's, I, I'm not gonna say it was premeditated and I'm not gonna say it was planned, but I'm gonna say that when he had the opportunity, he, okay. he took the opportunity. You know, but this is what the justice system does. It's a, it's a, it's an ineffective justice system when it's applied to, you know, cases of uh, uh, mis police misconduct and police brutality, mm -hmm. right? And this, and this officer has a history of these kind of things. Yeah, right. I, I've seen a picture where he had previous encounters where he did something to an Aboriginal or something. Or I, 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 I don't know. Don't no quote me. I, I chose to not study these things and to not really look at it because I don't, I feel like I can't make a change. That's how I feel. I feel like racism, a picture I seen was, you're not born racist, you know, you're taught racism. Yeah. So my honest opinion is that racist people and racism will never die because if you look at it from this point of view, there's always going to be an evil person out there. There's yeah. always going to be someone that's going to bring down generations of further races. You're going to say, look, black people are this, black people are that. You have to treat people this type of way. So I feel like racism, and I seen a video where Akon he was saying, in Africa, you won't get treated like that. As a black, you're gonna be treated your normal. I used to live in Barbados for three years. Now this is something I want to talk about that I never spoke about with a lot of people. So I'm black and I'm white at the same time. So for me, I don't classify myself as black. For a long time, I never said I'm black because if I say I'm black, I also have to say I'm white at the same time. My mom is white, my dad is black. So. I lived in Barbados for three years, and Barbados is a predominantly black country, black people. But when I was there, I didn't get treated like a black. I got treated like I'm an outsider. They would call me red man, they would call me white boy, and those are der derogatory terms. Mm -hmm. That's racism right there. Living in Canada, where it's a multicultural city, or country, sorry, Toronto specifically, yeah. I grew up knowing brown people, Asian people. I don't know many white people. Diversity. Yeah. So my friends are a wide range of yeah, races, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? 
But me, when I walk in, around the streets, if I wear my do rag and I see someone who's not black, I can automatically sense that they feel a type of way from me. Like they feel like you're big, you're black, I'm shook. And I feel just that energy. So I feel racism as a black man sometimes. And I also have gotten my fair share of racism as being a white man. You know, so I'm facing two types of racism in my life. And do you have any other, you know, examples where you face racism? I mean, you know, you go back, man. I mean, like, you know, just from, from you know, from racist teachers in high school and elementary school to encounters you have just with people in public you yeah. know what I mean? and, you know, snarky remarks that you may get and those kind of things. Um, you know, uh, I've never had any, you know, uh, bad, you know, interactions with the police, thankfully, yeah. you know, um, uh, so I can I can I can't speak from a, a, a point of experience with police brutality at all. Mm -hmm. But um, I could I could be I could be empathetic, of course, and yeah. I understand that it's, it's a problem in our society. But I also understand that you know there's a larger problem going on right in our society, and it's you know of course like I said it's, it's tied to systemic racism, right? You know, and it's tied to these these uh, these, these legal these the, the legal system and the criminal justice system. And how it discipl disciplines police misconduct. Yeah, right. And I, like I just said, these, these cops, you know, they feel safe, man. You know what I mean? Like, well, think about it. If, if you were a cop, right? And, and let's just say, you know, you had a, a racist attitude and a racist agenda, okay? You know, you got a gun, but you know that your buddy, you know, your other fellow constable was just put in prison yeah. for five years or so. Hasn't seen his children, hasn't seen his wife in this mm -hmm. amount of time. Don't you think you would think twice about double the trigger on killing that thing? But like, because there's such a long-standing history of cops getting away with murdering blacks, sure, or, and not just murdering blacks, but even you know, brutal, just brutality, you know, beating blacks on the yeah. street. Remember, because back in the day, you know, in, in, the, in the '60s and the '50s and that kind of stuff, you know, they didn't, they didn't always kill blacks. Sometimes they'll bring the dogs, they'll bring the hoses. It was just terrorizing black people, right? Yeah. So they didn't always die. But I still, refer, I still refer to that as police brutality. Mm -hmm. And America has a massive history of that. Yeah. Right? Massive history. So what and, does and America need to do? To well, change. what they need to do is there needs to be, you know, uh, you know, legislative amendments, I would say. Yeah. Right? And, and, and obviously, you know, as, as people, we have to be lobbying these kind of things, of course. Sure. Meet our, Which is we, what we're technically doing now, but I think they're going the wrong way about it. Like looting stores. That's not lobbying. I, mean, I don't believe in violence. I mean, like, I feel like, like if, you, if you have a, a specific purpose behind your protest, we'll stick to the purpose. Yeah. I mean, I don't believe in, you know, these guys are going into Target, you know, stealing a bunch of video games and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's so stupid. And they're going into the Foot Locker. I mean, it's like, now, but now you guys are giving, you know, the, the ruling elites and these, you know, uh, 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 you know, you know, white folk in powerful positions, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the ability to say, oh, you know what, now we could, you know, criminalize you guys, you know, because yeah. you guys are committing criminal acts. And then you have people like, you know, of course, the US president is now saying, you know, he's going to use force if mm -hmm. this doesn't stop. And you don't want that. Yeah. Right? That's all we want, right? We, we, we want to get a message across, um, a very profound message that this needs to stop. And, you know, those are leaders, you know, that make these, that make the decisions, that make the laws, need to make changes to these laws. Yeah. Understand that these cops cannot get away with these kind of things. And the issue is, is that, you see, if they had, you know, uh, applied some sort of punishment to that cop, right? Well, it should have been immediate, but here's the thing. You see, they, you see the reason why, see, if they did it immediately, this protest wouldn't have started. Yeah. Because I mean, and we, what, what are we going to be vexed at? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the reality is the, the punishment has been delivered and that's yeah. it. But it took them four days to do so. And now look, you have all this civil unrest, you know, this social upheaval. And it's all because of a justice system that does not want to discipline police officers. They don't want to do it. And, and the worst part is this, even when they do do it, it's not enough. Yeah. It's not enough, man. Like, dude, that, 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 the brother's not going to get his life back. If that family's not gonna get it right back, they're they're they're, uh, they're lost they're lost back, right? So, um, you know, it, it's it's incredibly concerning. Yeah. It's incredibly concerning seeing how we're not we're not getting um, you know, we're not seeing any change here, right? Don't expect change mm -hmm. from demonstration and protest. Yeah. Don't expect that you know it, you know we're not gonna see another brother get brutalized by police. Don't don't expect that because obviously you don't wish that. But the other the reality is prepare for that kind of stuff to. You know, still pr probably happen. Yeah. Because the reality is this: the system is so entrenched 
you know, for these this kind of oppression and these oppressive attitudes that you know certain uh, 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 groups of society, typically the the, the privileged and, and then the you know the white people, they have these attitudes and this kind of supremacy kind of behavior towards mm-hmm. black people. Right, so it's, it's it's a lot going on, but you know, what I mean, um, I, I think that you know, there's a tremendous effort that we're seeing from uh, you know a number of leaders in the community, and uh, I, I must say, you know, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm happy to see a sort of a pan Africanist you know uh, uh, discussion going on now. You know, I was watching CNBC today, and I'm seeing all these CEOs of companies suggesting that you know we need, we need reparations for slavery. We're asking for you know, I seen the founder of a. Uh, uh, a BT, I think, or something like that. He uh, is talking about you know trillions of dollars for reparations of slavery and yeah. you know all the all the, 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 the how we built up America. We need to get paid for that and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm happy that these kind of conversations are being started yeah. now yeah, yeah, because yeah. these kind of you know pan Africanist conversations and these kind of you know uh, unification conversations are very important, mm-hmm. right? Because that's what we need as a community. Yeah, that's even bigger than police brutality. We need to come together. You know what I'm saying? We need to understand that we need to organize, centralize, right, and develop an agenda as a as a community together. You know what I mean? And that that that's one thing that is a positive. You know, I use positive in a very you know you know sensitive way from this whole experience that we're now raising these conversations. People are understanding that slavery has not. I'm sorry, uh, racism has not gone anywhere. You know, as I think it was Will Smith that said, um, you know, get recorded, get recorded, right? You know what I mean? Like that's that's really what it is, you know. And you know, you know, you, you don't forget about you know Ahmed Aubrey in, in Georgia and that kind of stuff. I mean, that, that's 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 a ter- countless that's, victims. That's a terrifying thing. I mean, I'm gonna tell you this: these guys are talking about civil uh, 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 arrest or something like that, and they're saying in Georgia that's a thing. You know, you can obviously arrest people as a as a as a civilian. You know what I mean? But. You guys, you don't plot a shot on a, on, on, on a brother because you think that he robbed a store. I, and again, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't get into all the details, but yeah. all I know is you shot, you shot a brother with a shotgun because <laughs> of, you know, you thought you wanted to arrest him, right? But this is unacceptable, yeah. right? And even in those cases, too, you're having these guys that, you know, it's taking too long to punish people, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the worst so part... Did they get arrested, the two guys that... I believe, I believe so, I believe yeah. so, yeah, I believe, but it was too How late. long did it take? I mean, that thing happened a couple months ago, I think, man. You know, and then it took too long, you know? But it's still, it's, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot to digest and you know what I mean, I'm, you know, every time we go on Instagram, I bet every time we go on Instagram, we just see everybody posting stuff. And I don't, I don't read it. I don't watch you know, it, I don't read it. You know, sometimes you can't even avoid it, really. I mean, like, you know, every time I click on someone's story, they're yeah, going to have some like, sort yeah. of uh, commentary about it, which is, look, it's, this is fine, that's fine, right? Um, but what needs to be stressed the most is, you know, obviously we need to get together. Yeah. We need to, you know, we need a much more sophisticated approach to handling this situation. I agree, because everyone just writing is stupid. That's it's not a power play. play. It's not it's not a power play, but remember it's it's a it's a it's a, it's a organic reaction to this right. type of stuff. Because look, people are fed up, right? I understand, right. but there's a, a smarter way to make the change. Well, and, and the, the choice that they're making is not the smartest way. And, and if you want meaningful change, you, you know, uh, you know, social upheaval might not be the answer, right? Like, you, know, you get the message across. You get the message Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's working. Oh, definitely. Yeah. But to make that, you know, it may spark change as well. Yeah. But I feel like for change to actually happen, powerful black people and powerful white people need to come together and understand sure. that, look, the system is broken and we need to change. Yeah, man. I, I, I agree with you 100%. That's it. Not just black people, white people too. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. sure there's good white people out there too. Of that course, man, look, I mean, you're, you're, seeing, you're seeing a lot of white people that are involved in these protests as well, these demonstrations, you know? Mm-hmm. The white people understand, and not just white Asian people, yeah. Southeast Asian people, they, they, they understand that, look, you know, black people are treated very bad mm-hmm. in American society, you know? To a lesser extent, of course, in Canada, right? But, yeah. you know, I mean, in American society, we're treated very You know, bad. we're spoiled. You know, I mean, look, I, I just think that in Canada, I'm not Toronto. Sure, yeah, Toronto. I'm just gonna say this. I mean, in Canada, we definitely have racism. Oh, for sure. It's not I feel like we don't have racism. In Canada. But I feel like it's not nearly like I. I don't hear any stories of racist police officers killing black people in Toronto. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I feel safe when I walk the streets as a black man. Yeah, and look, dude, let's let's be real here, okay? Like, let's not act like it's not safe to walk the streets. Anymore. Okay, as a black man, let's not act like it's not safe, okay? Not, yeah, every, not, not every black man in America is getting brutalized by police yeah. officers. Let's just say that. Um, but one is enough. 
Right. Yeah. Two is enough. Three is more than enough. And they have hundreds, bro. Hundreds, bro. Hundreds. Bro. hundreds. Yeah. So of course, it's incredibly concerning, man. And it's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but it's, it's, look, having these kind of conversations are very healthy. You yeah. know what I mean? And, you know, having, you know, a number of people, you know, speak on these matters and say what they have to say. And, you know, we have leaders in the community doing what they think they can do or whatever. So th- th- this is all positive stuff. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But, um, of course, if you want meaningful change, it's going to require a much more sophisticated approach. And it's I think time, too. It's going to time, of course, man. But, you know, and, but it shouldn't take time. Like, racism is the goal. I think the first racist murder I seen or heard about was Trayvon Martin. That was yeah. the first time it was brought to my attention. No, but, social, yeah, remember. But it wasn't the first. Oh, <laughs> it was buddy, a thousand buddy, times before. Buddy, buddy. It's, just, it's just a much... Like like I said, you know, in the sixties and then in the other in the old in, in the in the days, you know what I mean, of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, you know what I mean, brother Malcolm. We they had to deal with a lot of stuff in those days. Yeah. You had the Black Panther movement, you had so much, you know, uh, What years were this? That was the fifties, the sixties, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you know my dad. Now this is why I, I respect my dad on so many levels. Because in 1977, he married my mom in 77, 75. And he moved to a town called King Carter in Canada. And this is a, in Ontario. And this is a, a white town. My dad was probably the only black person in that town in the 70s. Yeah. So for him to say, you know what? I'm still gonna go. I don't care. He faced racism every single day. Every single day, my, he faced racism. Let's just say that. And I respect him for being powerful enough and brave enough to say, I'm leaving my town, of my, my country of Barbados where I fit in, and I'm going to the country in Canada where I am the only black man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So whenever I, I, I think about it, it's like, my dad's a, a man for that. We all he knows in love, right? And he was in love too, <laughs> so that's crazy to me. I respect him for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those type of things, they change. So now, at him being the only black person in that town, he's the only black person that they may have ever seen in their life. In real life, you know what I mean? And he opened up that border. He brought a new vision to them that, look, I'm a human, and he faces fair share of racism, but to the very same day, he gets respect. You know, so that's, I'm proud of him for that. Yeah, and you should, you should, you know, your you dad's a, you know, great man. The sickle. You know, <laughs> and we gotta, we gotta check up on him, man. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta take a trip to Barbados. Yeah, and, for uh, sure. Spend some time out there. But yeah, yo, I think that's, we're going to wrap it up now. I think we got a general, I learned a lot about racism and, you know, how it started. I never knew it was Europeans and Africans and Africans actually started trading their people because they're good workers. And then Europeans took advantage of that and said, no, you guys are too good. We need you. Yeah. We're not going to pay you though. Well, I mean, you know, let's, of course it's much more. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. We got, we got a lot of detail. Yeah. And, you know, I'm literally just trying to, trying to give you a, a historical period in about 25 yeah, seconds. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> I know there's more to it. Yeah, I'm yeah, 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 of course. And you know, look, man, like it's, it, it, when, we, when we look at the history of racism in Canada, America, wherever you want to look at, what we, what we must not forget is people who've always been there trying to fight. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let's not act like we haven't been fighting. You know, we've always been fighting and, you know, um, some successfully, some unsuccessfully. Um, we've had, you know, you know, all, all our, you know, or we've got together the community organizations, community leaders. They, they, they've done what they can, and I don't want to, I don't want to say like it's not enough, but yeah. the reality is, we have, we have to do more. You know, so what, I mean? what and can the ordinary person like me, yourself, what can we do? Well, I think what you're doing, I mean, with this platform, I mean, if you can just get out a message to people, understanding that, look, you know, educating people, let, let people understand that. Racism is not something that's going to go away. You have to live amongst it. You know, yeah. Racism, you're going to have to live amongst it. And, you know, rioting, and of course, we're all upset. We don't like this at all. You know, this, is not, this is not good news. We're not mm-hmm. like, you know, oh, yeah, let's go outside together. You know, we, we're in the midst of a, a public health crisis as well. Right? Yeah. We, should, we should be outside together. But the fact is, we're upset. We're fed up. Um, another brother has been, you know, brutally uh, murdered by mm-hmm. a police officer. And we just can't stand it. Yeah. Right? So. But I feel like, look, everyone has to do their part. Whatever you think you can do in your capacity, do it. You know what I mean? If you think you can spread knowledge, do it. Yeah. If you think you have, uh, you know, you want to contribute money to some of these organizations that are doing whatever uh, sort of things they're doing, you know, do it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, um, the Black Lives Matter movement, I think they're doing a number of things. Um, but it, it's, it, it's, look, it's do what you can and, you know, understand that a much more sophisticated approach is necessary. You can bring attention to it in your capacity, of course, but there are leaders 
in, in the law making world and the decision making world that have to make, you know, they have to do something about this. And, and I'm sure they're doing it, but the process of changing laws is a lengthy process. Yeah, and it, right? it, it, it might not even be changing laws, it might, it might not even be that much, but the fact is, these, these police officers have to be disciplined. Yeah. The, this is, the, the disciplinary the measures have to be enforced food. better. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, if, if, if it's, it's fine. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. But I'm saying if we have someone that is getting, you know, killed, hurt, whatever, by a police officer, that's messed up, that's fucked up, yeah. right? But the reality is, it's, it, we all feel much better, and I'm sure the families will feel better if they got justice. For sure. Right? Let's just say what it is, right? And the yeah. fact that justice is not being served, or if it is being served, it's like a slap on the wrist or something, right? It's a joke. It's, it, come on, man. It's a joke. Know, these cops should be, when they do this, they should be scared. They should be like, oh my gosh, look what I've done. I feel like, like they're not even scared. But that's what I'm trying to say. Like, these cops, they should be like, I just killed a black man, I'm finished. <laughs> but when, yeah. look, and I guarantee you, yeah. if, that, if, if that were the case, if the, if the laws were so strict that this kind of stuff were to happen and you can prove, you could prove, with um without reasonable doubt or whatever that this was a hate this done a hate a hate crime whatever yeah. um that cop should be you know locked up mm -hmm. right and it should be on trial for murder you know for what I'm sure. saying like they like just call it what it is man like let's not try and like shoot cold things and act like oh he didn't intend to do it look man this guy had a, his foot on the brother's neck he told you he couldn't breathe this guy was calling for his mom you know <laughs> you, you think he wants to call for his mom he he must have literally been so scared, and man, and it hurts, bro. It hurts. It's not, it's not it's not nice to talk about. But he must have been so scared and frightened that he's just like, man, I'm gonna call for my mom. Yeah, that's I I I, I, I might die right now. That's what I mean. Yeah, I, I'm still not gonna watch that video. Bro. I can't. Those certain things I just can't watch, bro. I can't watch. Bro, we live in. You know, you made a good point saying racism is never gonna end because it's not. But we just need to change society and change laws to make to live with it. That's to live it, with it. Right, right now, it. racism is running free and it's terrorizing black people. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and in much other ways too. Remember, it's not just police brutality. It's, it's, sure. it's employment. This is another thing I want to talk about, bro. When I when I got this place, I had to come in a look formal. <laughs> yeah. If I came like this. And he's seen a 25 year old black man. Yeah, you, think yeah, yeah. He, you think he would lease me the place? Well, probably I had not. a place I was trying to live in. Probably not. My credit score is off point. I had the financials to prove that I could pay this rent. Yeah. You know what the person said? The landlord said, I'm not going to rent it to him because he's black. That's is just, it the same landlord? No, 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 no. Another land, like uh, before, yeah. I, another place I was trying to live at, they said, I'm not going to rent this place to you because you're black. Yeah. And they just said it just like that. And I'm just like, I didn't care. I'm just like, wow, you're that ignorant? All right, you just lost a good tenant. But those are things that I face as a businessman. I'm a young black man trying to do things. It's not, it's not easy. It's, it's not hard. Easy. It's not easy. It's man. hard. It's, you know, getting into the work, even to get into the workforce. You know, if you want to get a job somewhere, you know, first of all, getting a job is already tough enough. Being black, but getting a high paying job, yeah, yeah, yeah. can you imagine how tough that is? You know, you probably need a lot more education than others do. You probably you don't have any connections like you know, much more people are privileged too. You know, so it's tough out there, man. And then again, you know, wrongful convictions is another conversation. Blacks get much more time in prison for the same crimes yeah. that are committed by white people. The same crime, a blacks can get a tougher sentence, mm -hmm. right? And, that, and that, I'm, I'm sure statistics, I know there's statistics to back that up, right? Yeah. And um, there's, look, there's a lot of troubles in the world, but you know, we must educate ourselves. Everyone must have a, an understanding of what's going on. You know, it doesn't mean you have to hate, you know, a certain group of people in society at all because not everybody's bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I'm sure not every police officer is a racist, right? Of course, I think we could all agree on that, okay? So let's not act like this is something like, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's white versus black. Absolutely, it's not. You know what I mean? But the fact is, there are systemic issues at play here that need to be addressed. And if they have been addressed, it wasn't effective. Yeah. Right? And we need more measures. We need more, you know, more, more processes and you know, we need, we need stuff to get, we need stuff, stuff has to happen. Yeah. Yo, that's why you need to run for a high position to make the change, bro. You have the degrees, you have the education, and that's how it has to go. That's how it works, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. it works. So, yeah, really. the racist people really messed up by giving black people an opportunity to get educated. Well, and well, you know, and look, there's another conversation about that. <laughs> there's another conversation. And they, that's what they messed there's up. There's a history about that too, you know, and, 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 and miseducating blacks back in the day, not giving them yeah. the right education. They don't want blacks to read, man. 
You have to understand, man. Look, dude, like it's deep. When, when you go, when you go into, we talk about the word racism, and you want to talk about oppression, you want to talk about colonialism, you want to talk about slavery, you want to talk about, you know, all these things, man. Like, dude, you 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 you're getting into a long conversation. Yeah, you know, know what I mean? I you, people write books on these things, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, right? So, hey, yeah. if you guys ever want to hear us discuss about anything else. I'm open to it. If y'all are open to it, post in the comment section down below. If you're open to Let's it. Do it, man. Let's you do know, it. So post in the comment section below. Let us know. If you guys enjoyed this video, press the like button. I learned a lot. I hope you guys learned a lot. And I, what I'm summarizing, to summarize this whole conversation, I feel like we have to make change. And I feel like the best change you can make is the point I just made is educate ourselves. Educate yourself, man. Know, educate know, ourselves. know what's going on. Know what you can do in your capacity. Right? Yeah. You know, and you know, whatever you can do, do what you can't do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Not everybody has, you know, the powers and the abilities to do profound and very impactful things, but the little you can do matters. Yeah, it makes a difference. Understand what you know, we have to come together as a community, man. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I guess we'll catch y'all in the next video. We got some things to think about now, um, you know, I'll catch y'all in the next one. <laughs>